loaded up. It's about 34 degrees or so. Had a little bit of beef light, not much. Just the ones that didn't want to be messed with. I've got a real short haul. I'm just moving these a few miles, so I'm not worried about the lids being different heights and all that. I probably won't get over 30 miles an hour. And I didn't plank them. I didn't put two by sixes over the tops. If I was going the long ways, I would. I'm not too worried about that this morning. These are gonna be drone flutters. I won't, uh, I won't drone comb in every one of these and they're gonna be in my drone flooding yards. Feeling a lot of pressure this season. Some anxiety along with that. I need to turn the corner this year. Um, you know, I lost my full-time job. I got laid off in January of last year and I knew it was gonna be a two-year ramp. Just looking at the numbers, I knew that um, the, all of last season would basically be laying the groundwork to be able to make the jump into a full-time career this year. And this year, I've, I'm probably putting too much pressure on myself, but I think of it like it's make or break. I've got to get to a sustainable number of hive counts and honey production, and also of honey supply for honey packing and wholesale customer base. I've got to start working with some centralized distribution type wholesalers because yeah, I made a honey delivery yesterday, drove two hours, and uh, it's a good account, but that's two hours of drive time. And um, it's just a lot more efficient if I can drop off a whole bunch of cases all at one time. So I need to pick up some bigger wholesale customers and then there's the money part of it. You know, the bigger wholesale customers want to give you 45 days before they pay you. So I'm going to be floating uh, bottles and labels and honey cost on two large deliveries before I get paid for the first one. So that means I need an operating line of credit and just a lot of business stuff going on behind the scenes that I don't. I don't show you guys, you know, working at a computer and sending emails does not make good YouTube videos. I've been busy with a lot of that background stuff though. It's tax season as well. I've been talking to my CPA. And, uh, just a, I'm feeling a lot of pressure this year. I'm feeling a, a lot of pressure to make good. I gotta say, I appreciate everybody's comments uh, and encouragement. It's, um, I don't know the word. Uplifting, I guess would be the word. It's uplifting. I appreciate it. So it's March 14th, and I had originally put on my calendar anticipating to start uh, grafting on March 10th, and I knew that that was too early. You know, I started like the middle or 20th or something last year, something like that. So, um, now I'm looking at the calendar, I'm looking at the weather, I'm looking at the bees, and we've got a cold front moving in, 60 mile an hour winds tonight. Uh, today is Thursday, and by Monday, it's gonna be 50 degrees for a high and 26 for a low. But Tuesday, it's gonna warm up to 60. So I'm thinking maybe next Tuesday, I think that would be the, uh, the 19th or the 20th, Tuesday or Wednesday next week, would have me start grafting some of these colonies uh, the one i showed you a minute ago has 8 10 12 frames of brood in it uh, there's not that many bees yet but within three weeks that hive is going to be trying to swarm on me within two weeks it may be so if i wait five days and then graft i'd be making splits uh, i'd be setting those queens out 10 days after that so that puts me about two weeks from now, I'd be splitting this yard. And I think if I come through next week and equalize them down just a little bit, the big ones, equalize them down, I think I can make that schedule work. I think I can hold them for two weeks. That's one thing I like about medium box management. 
Because this time of year, if I'm two weeks away from my split, you know, 15, 16, 17 days or whatever, I can just look through here and say, okay, that one needs to be split. It's in four boxes. The threes don't. The twos may be coal, so I may dissolve them completely. I've got a three down here that may end up being a coal if they don't progress. But all the fours are gonna need to be split. So when I roll into the yard, this makes it a little easier. It takes more equipment, but less labor. And since I'm a one-man show, I can scale equipment, I can't scale labor. I've only got so much time. So just let these bees grow up into those fours. Hopefully that'll keep them settled for, you know, two weeks, two, two and a half weeks. And then I come in and since I use mediums as my nuke boxes, got one headhunter bee here trying to get my face. When I come in and since I use mediums as my nuke boxes, I put a double frame feeder and eight frames in. I've already got my nuke box on top of these colonies. All I gotta do is arrange it. So I can probably put two, at least two splits in one of those boxes. Shake all the bees down, put a queen scooter under it, get it arranged just the way I want. Come back the next day, bees will go through the excluder and repopulate. And I just pull them off, take them to the nuke yard. It's efficient. Fun factor on this is pretty low wax dipping equipment. I love wax dipped equipment, but I don't like wax dipping equipment. I do think it's a really good treatment. That's some stuff I'm doing for somebody else. Steven talked me into dipping some stuff for him this year. I did more of this last year and um, I feel like I've got the tank paid for and I don't want to dip for other people anymore. It's a, it's a job. It's really a job. Got a drip tray here with uh, scraper bars and parchment paper because I can recover all this wax that comes off. Dump that back in the tank. That stuff costs money. Be glad when this is over with. I've got uh, 300 or so of my own boxes to do. And... I should have gotten propane before I started this because I'm going to run out. I'm not going to get it all done today. I'm going to have to load some tanks up and go fill up and then uh, probably do some more tomorrow. Beautiful spot for a bee yard. Just pulled in. Got a big group of toms up here. They're putting on a show. <laughs> There's a hen cackling on the river bluff or the creek bluff over there. They got them stirred up. Farm country turkeys, they don't get molested. They are not scared of me, hardly at all. So what I really like about this spot is that is south, that is north. I've got a creek right here, just off this bluff. This is on a high point that will never flood. There's also a seep over here and we're surrounded by hardwoods. So I've got good southern exposure in full sun. I came relatively early in the morning because I knew that I'd get shade from these trees. So I'm trying to start my end of my row where the shade ends. And anything past nine in the morning, these bees will be in full sun uh, until late in the day. The gentleman that owns this place is 92 
and he is uh, fastidious about keeping his property clean. And I mean, it is spick and span. His garden is immaculate. So I'm going to the trouble of pulling a straight line and trying to get my hives on even spacing and you know make them look really nice because I, I know that he will, uh, I know it will bother him if they're uneven and sloppy looking. Setting up cinder blocks for hive stands, pretty simple. I want them on 16 inch centers because my equipment's 16. And I basically just dig down, I'm on a little slope here, so I dig down more in the back than the front. And I want a bowl in the center that allows me to move the block back and forth and level it out. I can move it up to tip it forward, I can move it uh, forward to tip it back. Works quick. You see when I get done, there's a dip underneath the center of the block, but both ends of the block are supported. And over time, they will sink into the ground. Hopefully they'll sink level. One more important thing I'll add about this yard location that makes it just as good as I could ask for. That's a foundation for a house. I, I would imagine that was a trailer, single wide, and it's gone. But you've got service there, electric service. I don't know if it was well or water, or city water, I bet it was well or spring. That's not the point though. The point is this is a driveway. It's ditched, completely overgrown, but there's a driveway under there. This is all weather access to my bee yard that will not flood has southern exposure, water nearby, good northern windbreak, and good forage sources. Access is a big deal. If you can't get to your bees, it doesn't do you much good to have them there. So I'm setting my yards up for 24 colonies. And obviously I've just got spots for 12 here. That's cause I've only got 12 colonies ready to come in here right now. So I'll expand that out when I make some nukes and get ready to move them. The reason I don't do it now is because I've got other stuff to do. I need to start grafting this week. Let's set up a cell builder. And this weekend we're supposed to go to a festival and sell honey and I don't have any honey bottled. So I need to bottle 400 pounds of honey this week. I've got at least one more delivery to make and I've got to graft and set up a cell builder. So this, the rest of this can wait until it is needed. It was 26 degrees this morning. I've been waiting on that to get over with so that I can get to grafting and bee work and everything. I've got a colony right here that's in four mediums. It's 56 right now, but windy. I don't like the wind working bees and it's a little cool and this colony's grumpy but they're moving too fast and I want to use them as a cell builder. So I'm going to go into them. I've got a plan A and a plan B. I'm going to go in. I'm going to try to find the queen in this big, crowded, grumpy hive on a cool, windy day. And if that works, I'm going to nuke her. I'm going to pull her out into a nuke, leave that nuke in the same bee yard so that all the foragers will leave and come back to here, leave this queenless, I'll come back tomorrow and graft into them. If I can't find her, I'm gonna split this colony in half with a double screen board. When I come back tomorrow, half of it will have been queenless for 24 hours, and I'll try to figure it out then. A lot of times you can open the lid and you know you get that queenless roar, and you just automatically know okay these bees are queenless and uh, if you open the lid and they're acting normal um, doing what they're supposed to you can figure the queen's probably in that half so i'm going to get into this i'm really not looking forward to it but it's got to got to be done i hope i can find her so i just went through every frame in this top box and there are three frames of fresh eggs up here she's 
been up here very recent. So instead of spending my next hour tearing through every frame, I'm gonna make an educated bet that the queen is much more likely to be in this box or this box than she is to be in the bottom two. So I'm gonna pull these boxes off real fast so she can't go down, slap a double screen on, and put these two boxes back on the top. And then I'll come back tomorrow when the weather's gonna be a lot nicer and figure out if I made the right bet. Loaded up and pulling out. It's right at sundown. These are pretty calm. Well, except that one. They're gonna try to sting me in the face. We'll get them unloaded and then I'll be done moving bees for a while. That'll be good. All right, so I got these hives moved last night. And it is early. They've not really started flying yet, but I'm on my way to do something else. I gotta go deliver some honey. And I thought I would go ahead and feed them, get some feed in them, because they will get set back by a couple days at least, getting moved. You can see they're looking pretty good. First two I've been in are up in this medium already, and they're working right across it. So that's good. Good to have bee buddies. I um, it's March the 20th and I'm trying to graft today. And I knew that I had all of the equipment and supplies that I needed because I, I bought in a good supply last summer or fall. And uh, I got my grafting box out this morning. I had the wrong cell cups. I use JZBZ wide base cell cups with a little pin on the end of them. And I did not know it, but JZBZ makes two types of cell cups. The other ones uh, don't have a pin on them. You have to push them into a 25 64th hole. And I had the wrong kind. So I sent a couple of texts and Josh Hager of Bearded Bee Works uses the same cell cups that I do and he had some you know there's two small bee supply houses not too far but one of them is closed today and the other one doesn't carry JZBZ so Josh really saved me good to have bee buddies they can save you from the dumb mistakes that you make just dumb mistakes All right, so it looks like I made a correct bet on this colony. Queen was in the top two boxes. When I saw eggs in the top one, I figured if I dropped down two and split it, that would make the bottom queenless. And that was correct. She's in this second from the top. Good deal. I know where she's at. That's the majority of the, of the battle in getting this cell builder set up. That's what I'm gonna do, is take these top two boxes here that have got the queen, put them on their own bottom board, put a third on, give her a feeder, and then give them a gallon of syrup. It's basically making a big nuke out of this mature queen and leaving her field force here in a queenless state to become a cell builder. They should have enough time to recover from this and make a honey crop. In fact, I may have to split out of them to keep them under control. This bottom is gonna be grumpy, so I'll leave that double screen on as long as I can. Then I'm gonna have to assess 
how many bees are in there. I don't want them just super duper duper crowded. I may put a rim on. Um, they need a feeder and I've got to take one or two frames out. They need a frame of foundation in there mm -hmm. to draw wax on. They need room for bees and they probably don't really need feed, but I'm gonna feed them anyway. We're actually on a little bit of a flow right now. Uh, bees are, are bringing in some nectar. And so all I did is I took out two mostly unused frames and then a frame of feed. So the three frames total out. I added a double frame feeder. That leaves me room to drop a graft frame. It's a packed box. And since the queen has been moving up, it's like she naturally built me a cell builder. They've got kept brood, kept brood. Looks like emerging brood. It's me merging brood there too. So there's gonna be a lot of nurse bees coming out. I'll drop that graft frame right there. This hive has had multiple good mite checks over two years. Uh, they are gentle and they're productive. They're also well ordered and don't make a lot of burk home. So we're going to graft from this girl. And if she is following the script, she's gonna have eggs and young larvae in these top two boxes. And so there we go. Big, strong, queenless hive, well-fed, uh, crowded. Dropped grafts in there from one of my favorite hives. I know I did not get footage of my grafting, but I'm making queens, not videos right now. So I will show you what I'm doing though. So this is made by DC's Gadgets. Uh, you can tilt the steering wheel and it just allows you to hold the frame. Cell bar sits right here. And I use a Chinese grafting tool. I've got several different styles. I ended up using these from Better Bee or Data Ant today because my Man Lake ones that I usually use, the plunger was going off track and causing me to lose the larvae. So you really need 20 or 30 grafting tools if you do the Chinese ones to get a few good ones. Works pretty good. I'll go drop this frame back in the hive it came from and a um, couple of days I'll check back and see what my take's gonna be. Hopefully it's high. That's a healthy sill builder there. <laughs> This is almost like an all or nothing thing. It's either gonna be good or bad. Looks like they're clinging to my graft frame, so that's a good sign. Gotta put this down. So that's not bad. Four miss or five misses. Good looking cells too. Really good looking cells. I'm happy with that. So I need about 40 splits next week.